Welcome to the Tough Fish Show. I am so excited to bring to you Julie Gorgeous. Julie, thank you so much for being here on the show. Oh, you're so welcome. And thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here. I just, I think you have an impressive background and you have some stories that are very near and dear to me. So I can't wait to let the audience get to know you. But would you start with, um, how did you get into writing? Well, now we're going like a long way back because uh, <laughs> I've been writing for 30 years and I, I did start writing as a teenager. And I joke that everybody was always breaking into my room and breaking into my diaries and reading my diary. So I figure I might as well get paid for it. People are going to read my stuff anyway. And so I, was, I, was, I wrote poetry. I wrote in journals faithfully as a teenager. I wrote short stories a little bit. Um, but I never thought about it as being a career. So then in my early 20s, I was staying home with my oldest son and started picking it up again and decided for a little me time. And so took a writing class at the local college, still thinking this is a hobby. This will be for fun. And um, I loved it, loved it. Still, I held myself back. I, I was afraid of failure. I was afraid to tell people. I was embarrassed to tell people that I wanted to be an author and a professional writer. And so I kind of got in my own way, um, but I kept taking classes. And I say the turning point um, came when I went to a writer's seminar and this woman came up to me at lunch and we were talking and I said, oh, I have this idea for a novel. And she just said, well, what are you waiting for? And I don't know why, but that just that simple question got me to thinking that do I want to go to my grave, you know, not pursuing my dream. And, and so I got more serious with my writing. I took a couple correspondence courses from Writer's Digest. Um, I took a magazine article writing class and then I had a short story published. I started submitting my work finally and I had a short story picked um, published in a literary magazine and then an article I wrote for one of my classes got published into a uh, in a regional parenting magazine um, so that kind of emboldened me to move forward um, with with going ahead with my um, pursuing my dreams and quit dreaming about a book signing in Barnes and Noble and actually you know go for it just go for it so I, I did start writing my um, first novel and, but it, it was just a long road. It was several years later before I tried to get that novel um, published. That's amazing. But you said something just then where, you know, there were doubts whether or not it was just the, oh my gosh, can I do this? Or what will someone else say or what have you? But, um, and yeah, that, that simple question of, well, why haven't you done it type of thing? But what, was that the only thing that helped you to overcome and just keep just saying, you know, I'm going to go for this or did what, what else was going through your mind to help you overcome this fear and just, and make it happen. I think if you were meant to be a writer, you're addicted to it. <laughs> I think that your passion will overcome. And I think that's what happened for me. I think that my passion for it over made me overcome some of my fears and I and all those fears came true I mean I got enough rejection letters to wallpaper a room and people did make fun of me when I said I wanted to to be an author and tell you know all, all that came true but um but then you know I would have never experienced it if I hadn't moved forward and I think that if you're really a writer because you're going to hit those setbacks but if you're really truly a writer and that's your passion I think you don't let that stop you. I think you keep trying and getting into print. I, you know, I tell people this too, that's not everything. You have to enjoy writing for the art form it is. And because you, you can't, you can't let go of the joy of it. And sometimes you do when you, you get all wrapped up in the publishing or if you have a blog and nobody's visiting your blog or whatever, you kind of forget that what got you into it in the first place and you have to love it. And, and so I have an addiction to words. And, and I think that just gets me past, oh, I swore off writing a million times over the years, but I always come back to it. And I think that's why. That's a really good point that, I mean, you can see so many different rejections. And so 
yeah, you want to, there is that goal to be a book, uh, not just a book on the bookshelf in Barnes and Noble, but to have it forward facing so that your the actual book cover is facing. And, you know, when you first walk in, like, oh my gosh, I must have this book. <laughs> but to your point, when you keep, if you keep getting the rejections, it, it, it can start to get to you. And it's like, a, okay. And what I hear you saying is, remember why you started. Remember yeah. and, and focus on that why and that love and let that overcome and, and keep showing up anyway. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I used to keep this bulletin board too, just to encourage myself, my post, even encouraging rejection letters, if they said something nice about my writing or, you know, my first, you know, publication, my, I made a copy of the $22 check, <laughs> posted it up there. So any a little encouragement was helpful. But yeah, you just, it's a matter of persistence and not giving up a lot of it is. Oh, that's so true. And to your point, like that encouragement, like a file folder or putting it around you, those little things, they add up and they help. And because to me, those are also little nuggets that say you're on the right track. You're on, right. you've done something and it's making a positive difference. And it's like a ripple effect because you might not ever know what that thing that you wrote, whether it's a blog or an article or a book, how it's touched someone else. You yeah. might not ever hear that, but you have in some way if they have read it. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Yeah, that's the rewarding part of it. I know, right, right. So you, you mentioned you were working on a book or at that time, like you were moving through, but I know you've published multiple books. Do you wanna talk about how you got into any of those in particular, really? I mean, is, sure, every I know you're, you're a prolific writer, so yeah. let me know. <laughs> every book's different. So um, yeah, I, I actually found a well-known agent to represent me for my novel. That's and awesome. Writing is this big roller coaster ride. So I was just on top of the world with that. And it almost sold a couple times to some publishing houses, but it didn't sell. Mm -hmm. And then you get dumped by the agent. <laughs> so then, then you're in a low. So I had been writing these articles. My dad had a building system that um, helped um, um, steel framed houses become more energy efficient. And so I had been selling some articles on this subject to ma different magazines. And so I, I thought, why not approach a, a book publishing company and see if they'd be interested on a book on this subject? Because there were there are books on seal framing, but not on that angle of it. And so McGraw Hill actually yeah. answered my letter and, and it only took a few queries for that. I was surprised and um, cool. they were interested. So we, you know, I did the book proposal, um, just got down on the, you know, I didn't know much about it, but I just studied it and did my book proposal. And I, en we ended up getting the contract for that. That's yeah. awesome. It wasn't a fun book to write. It was like a fat technical <laughs> book that me and my dad tackled together. My dad's a civil engineer. And, um, but, you know, it, it, it was great to be, um, to, to be published by a New York publishing company. But again, I tell people um, it didn't mean to me what I thought it was going to mean. It didn't mean that it was automatically, it got my foot in the door and it was a great credit to have, but it didn't mean that I would never get another rejection letter again. It didn't mean that I was going to become rich or famous. So after we wrote that book and it was published, me and my father decided, because we only got, if I remember right, this is a long time ago, it was like 20 years ago, but uh, I think we only got 6% of the royalties on that book. And so we thought, let's just start our own publishing company and let's publish our own book so we can keep the profits. And so that's what we did. And I went back to that first novel. And that's what I mean, it was a long process. It's probably 10 years after I started this novel. And I read all my agents. I had a great agent. She was very helpful. And she gave me a lot of tips. And then I read all the rejection letters and the things that, you know, why it wasn't accepted. And then I went back and revised that novel. And we went ahead and published um, that novel. And then we published one of my dad's books that um, it did pretty well too. It was a humorous book on growing older and, and people really liked that. And yeah, so we, I, that's where I got my book signed at Barnes and Noble. I was able to um, 
we, we set up a lot of speaking engagements. This is before social media. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did it the hard way. We, there was no KDP. Uh, we, we had to do the print run, invest the money. Um, we had to store the books. We had to ship the books. So every time a book order came out, I'd be running to the post office. It's so much easier now. So we did the next um, two books like that. Um, and we even published a few other authors with our publishing company, but we didn't make a lot of money. And, and eventually I got tired of that. And, I, and I, I didn't write another book for like 10 years. And I went back to my freelance writing and I wrote for print magazines and online magazines and blogs and, um, and did that for 10 years. And then um, what inspired me to start writing a book again was after I was caregiving for my mom who had Lewy body um, dementia. And I, I just, my heart went out to all the caregivers that are put in that situation. And I wanted to share things that worked for me. I wanted to share all my mistakes to save the people the pain and agony of making the same mistakes that I made. Um, because so many people are thrown into that situation. They're just, you know, most of the time it's family members, most of the time it's women. And, um, and you don't know what you're doing. You, most of us aren't nurses or we don't know what we're doing or we haven't taken care of somebody with dementia before. So I wanted to share all that with other people. And so that inspired um, me to start writing uh, again, as far as uh, writing a book. That that's, inspired me. that's amazing because like to your point, it, 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 your, your role reversal is happening too. It's not just the fact that you're a woman and you're, t you're, you're, you're a family member, but you're the child stepping up in a whole different way, trying to care for this parent who you, you love and, and trying to, and, and it's, you know, dementia is just, and Alzheimer's, any, any one of those are just, they are unkind. And yeah. so, yeah, that makes it even more challenging. So I, commend you and thank you for what you did because I know that I mean my I, I know that that's there's so many who have been affected by by that and so yeah I totally I totally appreciate what you've done how how was that that's something so personal to write how, how did you do that yeah um it was hard to write and it took me um, I want to say at least two years to write it because I had to keep putting it aside. I waited a, I waited a little time to, to heal before I, I, I decided to write the book. Um, an author friend of mine encouraged me to do it. And, and, I, and I said, yeah, you're right. I've been thinking about it. I, I think I'm ready to do it. But it took some time. And then I, I would be writing and I'm like, this is too painful to relive. I have to put it aside for a little while. And then I'd go back to it. So it just, it was a process. It was healing in a lot of ways. It was therapeutic. Writing is, can be very therapeutic. So um, I think that it helped me, like even now I can talk about it um, because I, par I poured my heart and soul into that book, but it helped me heal also. So it, was, it ended up being good. That's awesome. Did you when you, so writing from it is one perspective. It's cathartic. But to your point, it, it was you thinking that there's, I, I kind of liken it to a wound. And when you have a wound that's um, fresh, you know, it's, you know, it could be a gash and it might have, you might need, even need stitches for it to close. But even if you don't, it still has to heal. It takes a little bit of time and then you can start to see the scabbing and then something happens and inevitably that might come up and it hurts. But then the wound is still there, but it's just not as big as it was. So like that new skin, that fresh skin is pushing up while the, the, the scabs and, the, and the, the pain is being removed. So it's kind of like in layers, but it, it takes some time. So as you were writing, you're going through that process and giving yourself grace and permission to say, I don't think I can, I can I'm going to write this to the point that I can and come back. But what was it like going back through and editing it, looking at it from a different vantage point, really, with some, some more time behind you, but a different lens as well? 
Yeah, um, the editing process probably was less painful for me than the actual um, writing of it. I mean, off and on, it would still, like you said, it's a, and that's one thing I, I approach in my book too, is I, I, so many of the books that I read, well, they were fat, first of all, and I, and I kept it really down to the nitty gritty, um, what, what to do when they're wandering off, what to, I mean, really short and to the point. Um, it wasn't a lot of science. I mean, I, I, there's, a, there's a chapter that describes the different kinds of dementia mm -hmm. and um, how to get it diagnosed and all this, but, um, but I wanted to take them through the process. And at the end of the book, something that a lot of the books didn't cover was how to heal and how to move forward. And, and so I, I shared that process, um, my process with that too, because when you're grieving for a parent, that's one thing, but when you've been caregiving for your, your, a loved one like that, and it's been going on for maybe one year or five years, then, then you're so wrapped up. Every thought I had was about my mom, especially as the disease progresses and your whole life is centered on that person. And then that's gone. It, it, and, and, and part of you is relieved. I mean, that you're not waking up and worrying about your mom, um, that, that she's not suffering anymore, but a part of you is lost because yeah. your whole life has been so centered on that, that after she died, I felt I had to refine, you know, you have to rediscover yourself and refine yourself. So I wanted to take people through that because I, I thought some of, a lot of the books I read were um, lacking that part of it. Um, and, and you do need to move forward you, and you have to forgive yourselves, forgive yourself for mistakes that you made. Maybe you weren't patient every minute of the day. Nobody is. And you had to, it, it's a whole process and it's a different grieving process than um, it is when you, you just lose a, a parent. Absolutely. I, I think that that is really cool that you included that part as well, because, you know, so many times you can learn about you know, what a diagnosis is or different pieces here and there, you're going to hear different parts, you know, at least from a medical perspective, but it's, but to your point about, so now what, now, what do I do after this, you know, when this time has passed, it's a, it's a different type of loss that's happened. So the fact that you were so gracious and open to share your grieving process really and helping others to kind of basically kind of be a shepherd saying hey give me your hand and I'll I, I may not know exactly what you're going through because everyone's experience is different right. but I can share with you mine and here's my hand if you want some you want to know that somebody else can you know has been there or at least understands and that's kind of how I'm perceiving your book. It's almost kind of like offering your hand to that person and I walking want, with them. Yeah, not to feel alone. And, and, and when you're hooked up, you know, because when somebody has dementia, you're home a lot, you're isolated a lot. And so I, 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 I did want, I mean, the, the statistics are horrifying. So what, one out of three seniors will get some form of dementia before they die. So a lot of people are going to be going through this. And I have had people reach out and tell me, um, how my book helped them. And, and like we discussed before, that's, that's the most rewarding part of writing. If you can reach out and help somebody or you can, you know, um, change their lives a little bit or make something better for them, then that's, that's the, the beauty uh, of writing a book that can touch people in that manner. And, and so I was so, you know, um, touched when people reached out to me to tell me that it made a difference. Yeah, that's amazing. That is that is absolutely amazing. So writing this book was cathartic and healing and, and healing in a few different ways coming through that editing process. But then what, was there something in particular that gave you the confidence to say, okay, now I'm ready to share this because it's one thing to do all of that in your own world, you know, when it's just you and maybe a few other select people to look at it, but it's another thing to hit publish and say, now it's available for anyone to read. Was there, did you have any, did you have a process that you were going through with that or was it a challenge? As far as going forward and publishing it and, mm -hmm. and putting it out there, I didn't have any hesitancy with that because that was the whole purpose to me was to, to, 
to reach those people. And so I, yeah, I didn't have a hard time. I don't know. I, I didn't, by the time I got done with the book, I was past the embarrassment of, of mistakes I made. I, and I was just, um, I, wa I wanted to share those things with people because I knew yeah. it would help them. So it helped me get past any embarrassment or um, it, you feel vulnerable. When you're sharing such a deep part of yourself, that's true. You feel vulnerable. But I guess by the time I got to the end, because it was like at least a two-year process and I was ready to let it go out into the world and, and share um, some of my deepest feelings and, and thoughts, I was ready to do it. That's really cool that you how you said that 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 you were ready you know and I just so with this book it was partially about self-help and and helping with caregiving and even giving some medical perspectives of here's some questions to ask to be your own best advocate but it also was a form of a memoir how mm -hmm. did you come through that with uh family members or other people who might be mentioned in this book do you have some suggestions on that I talked to them yeah yeah because you know what this wasn't just my journey um I did have help from my family I come from there's four of us um children and so my brother um was living with my mom when this first started and in the casita in, in the house and so uh, and and I helped on a part-time basis and then as the disease progressed, I eventually moved in with my mom. And, um, but I had help. I mean, I had my my husband that was a huge help to me. I had, I had two sons that were a big help to me. I had, um, I, Joni would take care of my mom if I had appointments, or, if, you know, if I needed a little break. Um, my, my youngest sister would take my mom one day a week. Um, my brother worked during the week, but he would help on the weekends. So I, 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 I did talk to them before I, I published this because it was a personal story for all of us. And I had, I had their support, but yeah, you, for sure. I think you need to talk to people before um, you share your journey. Cause like I said, it's not, it wasn't just me that was involved in this. It was their feelings and them going through, they were in my if you have siblings when you're grieving and going through this, then I think you're fortunate because you're all feeling a lot of the same feelings. And so I wanted to respect that. I wanted to respect their journeys as well. That's cool. And, and obviously talking to them, but do you have uh, any other suggestions if someone is thinking about writing a memoir, if there's something that they should do uh, like, or, or not to do when they're coming through some kind of piece like this? Yeah, I just think it's important to have open communication. I wasn't willing, if they weren't comfortable with something, I, I wasn't gonna share it. And I, I even respected my mom because I thought some of it, you know, would have been embarrassing to her. Some of the things that happened to you in dementia or I think you have, you're forced to lose some of your dignity. And so I was careful, you know, I shared some things but I didn't share everything that, that happened. So I, I think it's just a matter of, of respect. And, and yeah, I don't think it's worth it. If you're going to write a memoir, and I'm thinking about this for the future, it's one of the reasons I self-published this book, because I thought um, I, I might use that in a future memoir. And I wanted to keep retain my rights to my words. And so I, I didn't even approach a traditional publisher for this. Um, but that's I think that's the main thing, just uh, keep that respect. And if I do write that memoir, yeah, I'm going to respect it. People's um, feelings on that. I, I don't cool. believe in just throwing people over and then people are different about that, but that's right. how it would be. Yeah. I, I would be in the same space as you. I just, I appreciate having that conversation though for listeners who might be trying to come in, they might be writing their own or they might be figuring out how to write this type of piece. So I, that's why I wanted to ask you the question, because I think it's really cool that you, your book is in a few different genres, and that's why it was piquing my curiosity because of that. But um, are there some other books that you would like to talk about as well that are in your repertoire? Yeah, um, since then, I've written two books. Um, the, the next one I wrote was, well, after taking care of my mom, 
I did a lot of stress eating, <laughs> taking care of my mom. And I gained a lot of weight, the most I'd ever weighed in my life. And I was, by then I was in my fifties and the methods that I used when I was younger didn't work anymore. And it was much more challenging because you, well, there's muscle loss involved, your metabolism slows, there's a whole, so I did a lot of research on um, losing weight after 50. And then I decided that I would write a small, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small book on my 10 secrets to help those that are older, that are trying to lose weight. And so cool. I that, and it, that's up on Amazon. And then I uh, offer it for free for those that want to um, subscribe to my blog, babyboomerbliss.net. And you can get it free there. Um, and then the book I'm working on now is that because I've been writing for 30 years and so many people come up to me that are getting ready to retire or they're retired and they want, to, they want advice on writing a memoir. A lot of them are interested in that or a family history or they want to write the great American novel or they want to share their knowledge and write that how-to book or some of them just want to have fun writing. They want to write a book of poetry and how do you get that published and or they just want to start journaling or write poetry, but they want to know the basics. Um, maybe they want an encore, uh, encore career, you know, a freelance writing. And I've done many of those things over the years and, and are how to, you know, they're just mystified on how to move forward to, to write and publish a book. So I, I, that's my current project. I've got the rough draft written on it. I'm editing it. Um, I'm not pressuring myself to, in this time of pandemic, <laughs> Um, things are going slower than they normally would for me. So um, it's just in the editing process, but that's my next project because I want to share everything I've learned, um, the hard knocks I've learned. And, and um, again, just like my mom's book, I don't want people to have to learn the hard way if they, if they, if they want to write a book. I don't want them to get tangled up in these vanity publishers or spend all their retirement money in the wrong way. I just want to help them. And it'll be helpful to anyone that wants to write, but it's especially geared for those that um, are nearing retirement and, and they want to spend their um, golden years um, pursuing their passions and living their dreams. Leaving a legacy. Yeah, I mean, right. That's what I'm that's hearing true. you say. It's like, it's really yeah. a form of leaving a legacy, whether, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a memoir or a, a, you know, something like that. It can simply be a story that they Maybe they've told their children and their grandchildren, and it's it's that. Would you tell it again? Would you tell it again? Well, that could be something that they turn into their own store, their own book, because you know it's just loved so much that way. I think that's I think that's fantastic that you're putting that together. I think that is really cool. Yeah. But, so how did you decide you? you've done both between self-publish and traditional and it sounds like it was um, a strategic choice to do one or the other so do you have a recommendation for people who have a manuscript and or or even if they don't but they they're trying to figure out which path to go or how to make that decision do you have any suggestions yeah um it if you want, if it's your, your big dream, and it was my big dream to be traditional, tra traditionally published. When I was starting out, that was my huge dream. I mean, I, I, I wanted that really bad. If that's your dream and you can't let it go and you're willing to put in tons of time, you're willing to go through a lot of rejection, heartbreaking rejection, because no doubt, you know, and it might not happen for you. If you're willing to accept that that might not happen and you might have to take a different route to your dream, um, then go, you know, then go for it. I mean, it, I did, I went for it. Um, but just be prepared. I mean, it's it, it, you're talking about years of sending out um, query letters. Um, and then even if it gets accepted, it, it, it's probably another year to publication you might think that they're going to do all the marketing, but it's not like that. <laughs> you, you do, you, you're still going to do a lot of the marketing and promoting yourself also. Um, but it, it's, you know, I, I, there, there's definitely benefits to that. And I think, you know, it, it, self-publishing is, is becoming more respected as time goes on. 
but it's not going to get the same kind of respect, depending what you want to do. If like the book I'm writing now, you know, I'm all for self-publishing and for, I like the control you have over it. And it is strategic. Sometimes, like I, I said, with my mom's book, I might want to use that later. I'm, I'm going to self-publish this upcoming book because I might want to use my material in online classes or a webinar or whatever. I want to retain the right. So it all depends on your goals. Um, but KDP compared to the way we self-published our first books when it was really hard. And then with my mom's book, I used KDP and that was a thing of beauty. I mean, you don't have to spend a cent if you don't want to, to get your book published and put on Amazon or, you know, or even on these other online retailers. You, you, you don't have to put all that investment money up front. Um, I laid out those books on Word when me and dad were starting our, our publishing company. And now to have all the tools that KDP gives you um, where they, it's just a thing of beauty to me. And I don't have to ship them. I don't have to ship the books. That's it's just, to me, it was just eye opening. So they've made self publishing so much easier. And I'm a big fan of that too. And, and if you don't want the headache and you, and you want to keep control over your book, because if you sign on with a traditional publisher and, and an editor goes over, you know, over those words, then it's, it's some, a lot of that goes out of your control. Um, but if you self-publish and you, you feel strongly, you want to choose your own cover and you want to write your own story. And um, so it just depends on, on what you want. Very true. Very, very true. I like that you, how you just talked about a few of the nuances within that, that that was you know, like the benefits to each one, because yeah. sometimes when you hear them both, you know, it, they both sound appealing, but they both have they both have perks, they both have drawbacks. It's really whichever one feels the best for you and what your, your bigger goal is. But, um, but yeah, I'm so glad that you said that. And that being that you have experienced both and you still say, I want to self-publish these yeah. other books. I think that that speaks volumes to me. It just depends. When, if I write my memoir, if I, <laughs> when that time comes, I will probably try to find a traditional publisher for that. Um, just because I would want the help with the marketing, whether, you know, I would find one or not, I don't know. Um, but if I want to retain rights to my words and I want to use that material in any other way, then, you know, that's what I mean. It's, it's, you, you, you're exactly right. Weigh the pros and cons, think carefully about what your goals are. Um, if you just want to have fun with writing, I would say, just go ahead and use KDP and, <laughs> or, you know, um, you can go using Grim Sparks if you have bigger plans for your books and you, you want to go wider, as they say. But it, it's just, it, it's something you should carefully think about and, and think about your goals. But yeah, I'm all for self publishing. That is really cool. And I love that the books that you've written, they're really about helping people. They're help, they're there, they're, they're serving, they're serving people in different ways, meeting different needs. And it, just again, this even with, with this book about helping those who want to leave a legacy, write a story, share their, their ideas and you know, something in their retirement, like you'd said, that you don't know where that ripple effect will happen when that book is, is put out into the world or when that story is read by someone else. I think it's so cool that what you're doing is creating a lot of ripple effects that's yeah well your goals change as you age right my first two books were young adult novels and my first one was written you know a lot of it did come straight from my diaries as a teenager but then you you age you know like I used to write for parenting magazines and your interests age and so I think that I just turned 60 and that's where that's where I'm at in my life where I, I, yeah, I, I'm more concerned with making a difference in somebody's life than, um, th yeah, then my goals have changed. Yeah. yeah, but that's okay. But that's, yeah. but, but that makes sense too. And that that's a part of anyone's journey is that when that, when those things change and you're adapting with that, because then it gives you something new to create and to, to yeah. do. And who knows a book that's might just be part, part of that. Yeah, that's a wonderful part about writing. You never get bored with it. 
there's <laughs> always some new road to travel or, you know, to try. And it was like when I'd never written um, humor before. And this lady wanted to hire me to write funny articles when I was going through menopause. And I'm like, at first I was nervous. I'm like, oh no, I have never, I've never done that humorous writing before. And I've never tried to be funny. I'm more fun doing that. <laughs> it was the funnest thing. <laughs> I was cracking myself up all the time. So, you know, that's the other thing. I like keep your doors open. I started writing fiction. I got into nonfiction and found out that was very rewarding in its own way also. So just, you know, explore and have fun with it. You have to, you have to keep having fun with it. Absolutely. Julie, this has been awesome. Would you please uh, let our listeners know how they can connect with you and where they can get your books? Yeah, all my books are on Amazon. That's the easiest way to get them. And um, they can connect with me on juliegorgeous.com as my author website, or they can con connect with me on my blog, babyboomerbliss.net. I've got an author um, Facebook page under my name, Julie Gorgeous. They can connect with me there or on Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Julie, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so glad you were here. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.